Noel Wells, let's let's talk Master of None and the very um in the show you're in the very opening scene of the show. What was it like reading that in the pilot script? Um, well, I didn't actually uh, read that scene uh, in the pilot script because I wasn't given that originally. But what happened was when I auditioned for the show, they gave me a scene from the Nashville episode. But when I got into the room, Aziz was like, okay, forget the script. Uh, can we just improvise for a little bit? And he basically presented me this scenario uh, in an audition. And he was like, the condom broke. And I essentially reacted exactly the way that the character ends up reacting, which is like, hey, it's not a big deal. And kind of what became the opening of the pilot episode was uh, sort of based on what we had improvised in the audition and what we worked on later on. So, yeah. What, what was that like getting in there and getting thrown something like that? Well, honestly, I'm such a bad auditioner. I get really freaked out when I have to remember lines. Uh, so it was kind of a relief, like, oh, I can't, you know, I'm, I can make it up. And if I fuck up, well, I was making it up. So it was, it was actually really fun. And it was just like at the, the second that we started improvising together, I realized it wasn't like any other improv I had done before. Cause a lot of times improv, at least what's in like Vogue now, it's a lot of like jokes and one upping each other, but we were improvising from a very realistic place. And it was just, it was really refreshing. It was actually, I was like, oh, maybe I'm good at improv if you do it more realistically. Mm. And what, what, like, what, like, how is that different approaching a, like a realistic improv scene where you're sort of trying to be very real to character, real to situation? I don't know. I think just for me, it's probably a little bit more how my mind works. And I do, I do like taking things out to an absurdity uh, in improv. Like I, I like taking real life situations and seeing like where they can go if you push it to an extreme. But I don't really have like a mind for trivia or facts. And I don't have like a huge like pop culture uh, wealth of knowledge. So it's, sometimes it's hard for me to get on the same page when people are like referencing things and I don't really know how to continue it, but I've lived a life. So I, I know how I react in certain situations and I'm pretty good at assuming characters. And if I create a strong enough like point of view for them, I know how they would react in a situation. Mm. Do you use much improv in Master of None? Well, yeah, a lot of um, a lot of what got in the show were natural improvised moments that happened. Um, it was kind of a little bit of a mix. Uh, we had scripts written for all of the episodes before we started shooting, but um, specifically with Rachel and Dev's relationship, Aziz and I would throw out the script and kind of improvise the scenario, and he would record it on his phone. And we'd do it a few times, and we'd listen back and take out the pieces that we thought were really funny. Uh, a lot of things that arose out of that made it into the show. But on top of that, outside of just like revising the scripts, we did we did have like a lot of fun improvising in certain moments, and uh, it was fun to see the things that kind of made it. And a lot of it was um, like relationship moments and like cute things between them. Yeah. Mm. Let's talk a bit about Dev and Rachel's relationship in the show. Um, yeah. How do you, how would you just broadly like how would you define their relationship? Oh, okay, interesting. I think they had a, a really great camaraderie, and I think that they were coming from they both were coming from like a very open place. Um, both thoughtful and smart people. And I think it was like really sweet and loving, and um, but maybe like a little bit maybe a little too idealistic or, or something. And maybe that's why when it, things kind of got a little shaky, it fell apart really fast. Yeah. Why, why, why do you think like, why do you think it didn't work? What, what went wrong? No. Oh, good question. What did go wrong? I've been asking myself this for, uh, for my entire life. What's gone wrong, but <laughs> specifically for Rachel and, and Dev, um, I think that they got, they got like, they got afraid of commitment. Um, maybe it was kind of representative of, uh, like people of this generation or millennials that have too many choices. And then they think that maybe they went down the wrong path. And instead of like trusting in something that's working, the second something went wrong, they're like, oh, well, one thing's wrong. I, I might as well just throw this all out. Um, so I think maybe a level of immaturity, <laughs> uh, but also, I don't know, maybe it was just a little too, it was going a little too well and they didn't just fare it out. I don't know what went wrong. Who knows? Yeah. Well, it's just what, what, apart. <laughs> people yes. grow, people yes. grow and they change and some people go in different directions. I don't know. What went right? What was the, what, what, right? yeah. Well, uh, I think that they both really respected each other and um, 
there they both there was like a level of they respect each other and then they also challenge each other in a way that they both listened and i think that that's something that went right in their relationship and also i think goes right in human relationships. I think we all need to be open to listening to each other and uh, feeling like we can express ourselves and, and challenge people's ideas without necessarily saying, hey, you're wrong or a bad guy. And I think that that's kind of what went, went right with their relationship, but also I think went right with the show. I think that that's what makes the show really special. Mm. Yeah, and do, do you think, um, is there a scene of their relationship from the season that is like maybe a favorite scene or moment of yours and that you think typifies the relationship um a favorite scene um i really well my favorite scene that we shot was the liberator scene <laughs> i don't know why where he's trying to spice up their sex life and he buys a sex pillow and she's like it's just a pillow um i think it kind of is reflective of how dev was always like trying to find the best version of something or trying to solve problems externally where she's just like we have pill like <laughs> rachel's like it's just a pillow Th this isn't really gonna solve whatever is happening you know the, the problem it's not gonna fill the hole it's not gonna fix the sex <laughs> yeah oh that's good and do, uh, what, like, with using the improv um, on, on the show and sort of trying to bring a realness to it, um, was there any situations that uh, you were able to draw on from your real life or connect with or, yeah, like, is there any sort of situation of that in the season? I genuinely think every, I mean, everything that, how do you say this without sounding like a douche? Okay, so acting, I think, is like really always just coming from a place of honesty. I think good acting is just somebody being real. And and so, yeah, I think everything that I was, every every line that I was coming from, I was I was applying it from something in my real life. Um, do you do you mind like asking the question again so I can give you a better answer? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'll uh, give you a bit of extra time to think of the least douchey way to yeah. answer the question. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think like is there any um, I, I guess um, I, I'll phrase it in the sense of is is there a situation from season one of the show where you could draw on your own life experience or your own relationship experience? I think any of the arguments were all coming from a place that I've been from been in before. And I think any time that Rachel was standing her ground uh, in a real way, it, it, that's just who I am as a person. I don't, you know, I, I'm, a, I feel like I'm a very nice person. Um, I'm very, I'm, I like, like to negotiate things and I never want to cause any problems or fight, but at the same time, you have to draw lines and you have to stand up for yourself. So I think any of the times that Rachel really put her foot down, that that's like just me in my life putting my foot down and drawing a line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, what's it? What's it like? So we're talking about like your relationship with Deb. What? Uh, what's your acting relationship been like with Aziz? For I think it's, it was very similar in that we we really got along and we could talk about anything. And I think we're just. Uh, He's uh, Aziz is somebody who's very interested in life and the and the reasons why people do things, and um, I I think I am too, and um, he, I think that that's we both have that in common, and so I really enjoy hanging out with him and listening to him, and he likes and he really likes listening to people. He asks people questions, and then he just listens, and I I think that that's I think that's really cool, and so I we have a very similar relationship. Hmm. That's nice. Um, was there something of uh, fun? Like not not as far as a scene that was fun, but anything fun in the shooting of the show from season one. I really liked. Well, I think the whole thing was really fun for me. Um, it was such a laid back and easygoing set, and everybody was just really open and honest and cool and pushing each other. To, I don't know. It was just like a very open set. As far as like what was the most fun? I mean, it was fun shooting in all these really cool locations in New York City. I've lived in New York a couple times, but for very short periods of time, and I've never really gotten to do a lot of exploring. And it was it was really uh, a cool experience. I just got to spend three months in New York, not only just hanging out, but then we I go to set and we're still just kind of hanging out. Did, uh, what, what, was, um, what was your favorite place to explore in New York? I went, to, oh, good question. Um, I did a ton of walking in New York while we were 
there. And um, I went to a lot of museums. I've never really had time to go to museums. So I went to all the museums like multiple times. Um, yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of time alone there. So <laughs> it's like a lot of like contemplating life. What What were you contemplating, Noah? Life, dude. Like, like why and how come? And is it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what what's the best museum in New York that maybe we haven't heard about? Like you know, obviously there's the National oh. History Museum and the Met. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think everybody's heard of the museum. I'm not going to be the one that's like, you've got to check out this like museum nobody's heard about. I didn't. I didn't like dig too deep. I just went to the big ones and I went to them multiple times. <laughs> Whenever I've gone to New York, the Met's always been closed. Like I've always gone and tried oh. to go there on a on a Monday or whatever. Whatever the day is, they've closed. Has always been the day when I've popped down there. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. No, it was open every time I went and yeah. like maybe too long. Maybe it was open for too long. Hey, um, I have to plug in my computer. Is that okay for okay. me? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's probably best that you have power. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> no, that's totally yeah, yeah. fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Oh God. This is giving me a panic. I was like, oh God, it's getting, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, so with, uh, do you, do you know if you're going to be back for season two of Master of None yet? No, I don't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke with, I spoke with Aziz a couple of weeks ago and it seemed like they were only just starting to write it. Yeah. They're, they're writing it. It's, uh, it's happening. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I have, I really have no idea. Yeah. Cause right. Ra like Rachel very easily could not be back. They sort of ended up her, her storyline at the end of the season. But as people tend to do in life, she could easily pop back in as well. I think, yeah, that sounds like you should be in the writer's room. <laughs> <laughs> just just say just say things like she could be back or not be back. Guys, have you no, thought guys, about those two like options? We, really, we have a few options here. Um, <laughs> at least you didn't start with like... Uh, Okay, so we open season two. Rachel's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you like to see Dev and Rachel back together? Put aside that that would mean more acting for you on the show and you probably want right. to do that. Do you think they're two characters that should belong together or not? Um, I think that they both have to do some interesting growth for that to probably happen. But I think that would be the fun of a television show is watching characters evolve. Um, but yeah, no, they don't, they, they need to figure themselves out. I think before they, they uh, actually fully commit, you know? <laughs> and do you think with, um, with, with Rachel, uh, is it hard being the girlfriend of the lead on a show or the love interest of a lead on a show in terms of, you're sort of serving their character rather than getting to create sort of a character you sort of in your own right that can stand your own two legs. I definitely think that, well, no, it's not hard. I think the show was definitely different. I was more than just a, a girlfriend um, specific, especially since I got so much creative control over my character and that was really rewarding. Um, I do think the only thing that I found, find a little frustrating is that I guess people just, some people are just like, oh yeah, you're that girl that's the girlfriend of Aziz. Like, that's mm. how some people refer to me as, but I guess that's, that's like anybody on the show. It's like, oh, well, you're just that guy's friend. <laughs> like, so I, in, in some ways, I wish people thought there were more of her, but at the same time, yeah, it's not, it's a, I'm not the hero. <laughs> mm. I, I wouldn't want to continue just being a girlfriend on a TV show, but um, yeah, I've been getting lots of, I get lots of offers for things. It's like, all right, we have a great, we have a great part for you. You're, you're just this girlfriend. And I'm like, that's not that great guys. <laughs> I think this show is much different um, in terms of like, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think a bit like what you're talking about with the, the kind of scene at the beginning of the season, you're like, the show's really pitching for a authenticity and a realness and uh, representing not just characters that is the goofy friend or, the you know the lovely girlfriend or whatever but these individual characters that have their own sort of stories and own sort of personalities even if we don't follow them on their own a whole bunch yeah exactly i think that uh, alan and aziz were were really adamant about I, I think casting people that felt like real people and that had points of view that and they they like 
I think that that was their goal so that they didn't just have these cookie cutter two dimensional people. Um, they have humans with points of view. Mm. And I think something else, um, the, the, one of the scenes I particularly liked in season one was when you um, and Aziz had the, I think it was the hot ticket episode and you guys had a great night out and it was like, you know, you really connected the two, the two characters, you, uh, Rachel and Deb. And then at the end, she reveals she's got the boyfriend. Um, yeah. And just sort of the way that even after that reveal, you guys are able to play it as friends and it not be a big dramatic moment, but something you both have a bit of fun with and sort of play around with. But also you there's sort of that restraint there in the, like you don't end up sort of making out and going back to like an apartment or something. Like it seemed like there was a lot of sort of, a lot of different things going on in that scene with their relationship. Yeah, that was, that's a cool one because it's like, yeah, they didn't, these are good. These are decent people that clearly have an attraction, but this isn't the right time. And they're both like adult enough to like, be like, Oh yes, I'm feeling it, but let's pump the brakes. And, and then of course the universe has a wonderful way of putting them back together as, and, and you know, those, that universe is just like the writers, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and I get like with writing, you can do whatever you want, but in some ways, like it made it easier for them to get back together because they didn't get together in that episode. Right, like if they had if they had done something that they both would have regretted, I guess they then it would have been the relationship would not have been as breezy and cool and like clean at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a great that's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, do, do you have a favorite episode from the season? I mean, personally, I really do love mornings, and I, I think that was that was a really great episode. I mean, I, there was a lot I got to sink my teeth into, but it was just the whole process of coming to that episode and like how much me and Aziz worked on it together, and then seeing what ended up be, like being cut together. I don't know. I think it's a really great episode. I, I I heard the original running time of of it was like fifty nine minutes or something. It was like almost an hour, and then they cut it down to I think under thirty. So it's <laughs> there's a lot that wasn't there, but um. I think what they what they created was it was really it was really wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting you got like it's almost like that's the other side of the coin to sort of Nashville, which there's yeah. a little bit of drama in Nashville, but it's a pretty fun ex like just ep coupley episode where mornings there's a bit of fun in there, but that's more the sort of like drama heavy relationship episode. Yeah, exactly. Those are the yeah two sides of that coin, and I'm glad that they're there because you want to balance you want to balance it out. And um, yeah, I'm always for I like I like things and highs and lows too. So I I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop in something. So <laughs> I like that episode because like it does get it does get to a real place, and also it gets to a, like a real place. But then they also kind of iron it out in a very sweet but not too saccharine way, like with the like that that story at the end in bed where he you know, I don't know I don't know I just it's a really it's really lovely it made me really care about those people and um I think that that's like why else make make stuff <laughs> what's the best observation you think this show made oh okay put me on the spot here yeah I think that the big the one that every like we can keep coming back to is, is the insanity of how the level of choices we have and how that's just kind of it's just kind of fucking us all up and there's like i have this point of view that i go in and out of where i'm okay with just like making a choice and just seeing what happens and i don't like to have too many choices and i and i think it's like the flip side of that idea of like people wanting a ton of choices um but yeah that observation i, I think we can you can just circle around that forever about what's better no choices or all the choices. And in the end, you kind of just have to like, I guess, define what works best for you. Aziz I don't like, I don't like choices. I think Aziz likes having lots of choices. Yeah. Aziz has a like great bit of a stand up where he talks about how he, he we've gone to the point where he even needs to get the best toothbrush now. Like he needs to yeah. do online research for buying a toothbrush. When I'm looking for things to be effective. I don't need the best. I, I don't know. <laughs> the best toothbrush. That's really his toothbrush yeah. on the show, by the way, I was very impressed with. It was like this wooden bamboo toothbrush with these like bristles. And I, I had to ask the production designer. I was like, where'd you get this toothbrush? And I went and bought one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, 
Do, uh, you talked about the improv that you uh, do a bit on the show. You've uh, done work with the UCB and mm -hmm. some stuff with them in the past. What, like, do you still do uh, shows for the Upright Citizens, right? Um, yeah, whenever I get a chance. I've been, I mean, I don't, I've been pretty busy. I also have, uh, it's such a weird thing to say, but I have, like, really bad performance anxiety. And there's, like, a level of, I don't know, since SNL, it's been, like, it's really hard for me to get on stage. <laughs> and um, I've been working through it. And, and sometimes when people ask me to do shows, I'm like, oh, yes, this is coming at the exact right time. But as far as, like, hitting the pavement and, like, doing shows all the time, uh, not nearly as much as I used to. Um, but anytime I get asked, and if it's, like, a character thing, I do it. But I'm really bad at UCB style improv. I'm just not good at it. But I like doing, like, character shows and, like, write. I like writing things and, like, putting on the whole production. I like coming up with costumes and, I don't know. That's, like, that's what really gets me going. <laughs> yeah, so, like, so have you, have you done much with the UCB, the long-form improv stuff? No, because I'm bad at improv. I, just, I don't know how else to say this. The, yeah. This show was the first time I was like suddenly good at improv. <laughs> but I'm so bad at improv. But now, now I think I'm good at improv, but in a very different way. It was like, oh, I can, I can improvise. And I've actually been writing from that. Uh, the way that we improvise on the show, I now am able to write characters so much better. Um, it would be interesting to do long form improv if it was like drama and comedy. But um, as far as like, just doing comedy, man. I don't know. I don't know how funny I actually am. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm very funny, but like, I'm not. I'm not a joke machine, and I, I don't know how else to say this. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. Like, cause you like, and that like probably interesting how you've like uh, felt more comfortable with the master of um, non improv than the than the UCB sort of long form improv, where I guess it's sort of like someone who might not be able to play a particular like, instrument might not think they're good at music, then they pick up another one and they realize they're they just take to it. Yeah, I was trying really hard to, to play the saxophone and all I really was meant to do is play the piano. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. I'm actually, like so many more doors feel opened up and it's such, it's so less of a struggle and um, I feel like um, my comedy's gotten much better and it's coming from such a real place that I never have to, I never have to doubt if it's good or not because it doesn't matter to me anymore um, because I know that it's coming from a, a place that feels grounded and and I don't know like yeah it's cool I'm really excited I'm really excited about what the future holds comedically for me <laughs> yeah were you more excited were you, like was it easy for you like you know it probably wasn't easy but like doing the SNL stuff because that was less long form less improv sort of side of things than the UCB where they well yeah. when I actually got to do so here's the interesting thing about SNL is like when I actually had more than one line, I was totally fine. But if I just had one line in a, in a sketch, I would flip out because you only have one line. And if you don't make somebody laugh, they're not going to put you in anything. And so it was the sort of thing where it would kind of spiral. And I was like, oh, I'm terrible at this. But then there were a couple of times where I got sketches on where if I had just like even two lines, I was like, oh, I'm great. <laughs> like, I actually need to be here. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely SNL is such a mixed bag because it's like, you never know what's going to get in. You don't know what your part's going to be in that. And um, yeah, <laughs> I do think that I'm, I really do like sketch comedy and I, I it is my first love. And, um, and so, yeah, it does come much easier to me than, I don't know, just like improvising. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, like I just like I hadn't thought about SNL from that sort of perspective before. How it's sort of you're there, you've got one line in the scene, and like whether you're going to be in future sketches might rest on how you deliver that one line you've got. Would not be helpful for performance anxiety. Oh no, I remember. Okay, and then this this it got so bad like the freak out over the one lines because sometimes you'd only have one line in an entire show, so mm. it's like this is my one line for the week and there was there was a, a moment where I had one line and I was staring at the cue card with my line written on it and the camera cut to me and I forgot the line and I could and I and I also at the same time forgot how to read <laughs> <laughs> for at least for at least what felt like it, it was maybe like one one hundredth of a second but that that little moment lasted for such a long time. <laughs> and I remember uh, calling my boyfriend that night being like, did you see me forget my line? He was like, 
I saw something happen, but it was fine. And I was like, no, it like my an in- eternity, my life flashed before my eyes. But yeah, it, it was bad. <laughs> uh, um, do you have um like with um with uh does does the sketch comedy that you do SNL or anything or even the UCB stuff you've done in the past help you with Master of None or is that just like a completely different sort of beast? I think it was completely different. It was a completely different beast. The only thing I say UCB definitely helped me with is UCB is like very communal and is very supportive and is really all about uh, like helping each other out and making each other look good. And I felt like that that ethos was definitely at Master of None. So that that's something that I carried over from UCB. But as far as like the comedy of it, I, I, yeah, I, it wasn't very UCB oriented. And I think anytime we'd have people on the show who come from a UCB background and then they thought they needed to do UCB style improv, it never worked and we'd have to pull them back. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, I've seen a couple of I, like I try when I get to LA to see the UCB when I'm there, and like there is like a real sense of they seem to be enjoying it as much when someone else is delivering the funny line than when they're in the sort of spotlight. They seem yeah. to be really yeah. And I think that that's kind of just I don't know what else. To me, as a performer, yeah, it's great to be the center of attention and to be doing really, really well. But I think at the end of the day, I'm really doing all this because I'm trying to make connections with people and like create things with them. And and um, and I'm really glad that UCB exists just for that reason because it was a home that accepted me, uh, accepted me so quickly. And then I don't know, I just it was really it's like a family, it's like a theater family of weirdos. <laughs> uh, and. Um- what was the what was the most challenging thing for you a master of none i think the most challenging thing was at the very beginning i you know it hadn't been that long since snl had happened and i was very insecure and i was really paranoid at the very beginning that they were going to replace me or i wasn't going to be good enough and um aziz very quickly was like dude you got to chill out you're doing great and there was a moment where i was kind of like spazzing and he was like hey you're really good you're really funny you're okay and he said it and he like looked me in the eyes and it was like a calm just came over me and then from then on out it was just a blast (laughs) it's like your boss your boss just being like dude you're okay which i had no idea i needed to hear but um I did, and I'm glad he said it. Like, it, I like, I don't care what job you're in. You sort of like, if you have a boss that believes in you, or a leader who believes in you, that makes such a big difference. It's really an antidote to everything. And also, if you have an you have an environment where there's just some wiggle room that if you if you say the wrong thing, and that they they don't they're like it's okay, let's just move on. Like, just having that sort of spirit of openness just allows so much more creativity to happen and creates like, creates like a relationships that matter. And yeah, it was great. It's great. Um, I think when uh, preparing for this interview, I stumbled across your YouTube channel and there's some funny uh, stuff on there, Noel. Like what, what, like what sort of stuff do you like to post on YouTube? Dude. Okay. Let's see. Um, everything that I have on my YouTube was never as earnest as I think anybody thinks it was. And so, My favorite things to post on YouTube are the things where I'm making fun of the internet, but nobody knows that I'm making fun of it. So I have like a, I have a couple of videos that went viral, like really viral because people take it very literally. And, um, I, those are my favorite. They feel like comedy art. Like, (laughs) I did something and you don't even know why I did it. (laughs) The, uh, the, the toxic shampoo. Yeah, that. And then I have another one. Um, I have like a, like two videos where I I have like meltdowns in the middle of the video. And um, I don't know, they're really long and drawn out. And I, I, God bless anybody who actually watches it to the end. Cause (laughs) it's definitely a commitment to get through some of my stuff. Oh, it's, it's great. How like, you know, you're a master of none, but you can still like, and, and you, you, you do work in television and things like that, but you could still have that outlet to do your own. So stuff that's just completely your own as well. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm always like writing things for myself because I don't know how else to get anything to happen. Um, but I'm doing, 
I've been working with Comedy Central. I shot a pilot with them, and we're redeveloping it over the next few months. And then I just I wrote a movie, and I directed it, and I acted in it recently. So hopefully my YouTube days, well, I, it's not that I won't ever post on YouTube again, but hopefully they'll just be parlayed into things that are a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, hopefully we can talk about some of those projects when they're, yeah. when they're out. That'll be when fun. When they're out. Yeah. It'll be fun. We'll see. You know, everything's just a it's process. You know, you just keep doing it, and then hopefully one day people get to watch it. Mm. This might overlap with some of the previous questions. So let's end on, uh, Noelle, of you just saying what your favorite thing about Master of None is. The heart. <laughs> I really love how heartfelt but not in a not in a like family friendly way or like in a way that undermines the the overall point of view but i just like the that it's very open and thoughtful show and i'm really happy that i got to be a part of that well thanks noel for talking to us today it was so exciting to talk master of none and all the best for the emmys for master of none best support yeah. actress Oh well, yeah. It's a, it's a it's a first uh, first season of a show, so you never know how things are gonna like what voters are gonna take to and what they're not, and how well it's gonna do. It's always like the first season; it's always very uncharted territory for a show. Yeah. You. Well, we'll see. I think if any if it gets nominated for anything, we're all gonna be very very excited. So that'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. I'd say Aziz is the most likely of all the categories. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Aziz is pretty cool. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, see. We'll see. Um, yeah, but anyway, so thanks so much for chatting with us. It was really fun. Thank you for giving us uh, mainly non-douchey answers. Yes, there were a few douchey moments. I apologize uh, ahead of time, or I guess I apologize after. I should have apologized before it started that I was, I'm was i a huge douche. And just brace yourself for the debaggery that's about to be unleashed on you. Yeah, well, uh, mostly you were fine. So okay, <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much and all the best, Noel. All right, bye. Okay.